Andrew Crystal with you. This is Sirius XM. Well, money does talk. Facebook down 18%, over $100 billion off the books. And what will Trump's tariffs mean to an already volatile marketplace? Well, the number one day trader in America, John Morgan, is here to tell all. Oh, yes. Mr. M is with Forex Lens. And uh, they do a lot in terms of educating folks on the marketplace and what the hell's going on. Love that Forex Lens. Uh, Dr. Morgan, how are you, brother? I'm well. How are you? Thank you. And where did we reach you today? In Yankton, South Dakota. Beautiful. Love that South Dakota. Keep those missile oh, yeah. silos warm. We're going to need them. So, brother, <laughs> they're hidden all over. <laughs> so, John Morgan, uh, I'm shocked that Facebook lost so much off the books. Uh, that that's what what's going on, and let's talk about volatility, Trump tariffs, and how they affect things. What does this mean for consumers? What does this mean for investors? Well, yesterday was was kind of a, a fun day to trade because near the very end of the day, uh, when um, uh, Jean Claude Juncker and Trump came out, they talked about uh, you know getting a lot of the uh, eliminating like the U.S. is not going to do the twenty five percent tariff on European cars. Uh, they're going to continue to negotiate over steel and aluminum tariffs. A lot of bullishness felt uh, with that because well, it's a really big deal. Less uh, negative rhetoric. Uh, markets really like that. Then we have Mexico's trade delegates here, and uh, Mnuchin wants to get a, uh, uh, a trade deal here pretty soon. So, I mean, <laughs> this is an odd summer for trading because usually it's not this volatile. Usually there's not a lot of volume, but one day you have no volume and a lot of activity. It's It's been pretty wild, that's for sure. And when people, are, especially in this country, in Canada, start to pay more because of tariffs affecting food costs, grocery chains are saying food prices are going to go up. That also affects trading. It also affects how people approach the marketplace. It also affects the markets themselves because it hits people psychologically, not just in the pocketbook. Oh, yeah. yeah, in that, you know, here, there's, I live in a very conservative state, a lot of Trump supporters in this state, and there's a lot of soybean farmers, and they have not been happy because soybean futures have taken a significant hit. Um, but now that's rallied somewhat because uh, he was agreed to buy a lot of the soybeans now. We also, the, the euro and the U.S. and Trump and Juncker really, like, slapped Russia's economy pretty hard uh, by, by saying that the U.S. is going to send a lot more, and the euro is going to buy a lot more natural gas from the U.S., and that pretty much eliminates the only bargaining chip that Russia has with the European markets. Well, that good for Trump, though, that he's saying to the Europeans, why are you buying so much from Russia when Americans have to spend so much to defend Europe against Russia? European countries aren't spending nearly enough. And here they're tossing their dollars over to Russia, uh, mm -hmm. who is an existential threat to Europe. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I don't know when the two parties diverged and thought, well, we're, why are we going to... Like Trump is right on some. Of, Trump is right on some of these things. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, th yeah. There's 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 no doubt about it. He is right on some things, and uh, I I don't know. I mean, this guy plays a long game when he negotiates, and I think a lot of people forget that the guy's a businessman first and a politician second, and uh, he's he's also got the EU now. The, one of the other things that they talked about was that uh, they're going to work together stronger to get a hold of China's intellectual property stealing. If you've got the EU block hand in hand with the U.S. now going after China, that that's a big deal because now they're going to be on the same page and uh, China can't really pit the two of us against each other anymore. That's a good thing. I, I was pleased to hear yeah, that. Fantastic thing. So tell, yeah. uh, tell Canadians and Americans what they should be looking at, what they should tell their broker to do, what they should do themselves. Uh, I want to hear a bit about Forex Lens itself as an education opportunity. Uh, tell us uh, what's going on, what we should do. Give us some tips here. Sure. Well, as far as, far as uh, what you should do, I mean, I'm sure a lot of brokers are, are confused as heck, too. I mean, uh, yesterday at the close with, with regarding Facebook, I mean, Facebook took a greater than 20% drop. It's still hovering around that 18% now. That drug down 
the NASDAQ significantly, which is still down, but the other two averages are are, are kind of floating around. The Dow's still up, but the, the, the ES or the S&P's down. Your broker's probably having a heck of a time. Uh, uh, the, the brokers have two kinds of ideas on what to do: sit tight or uh, or try and figure out how to get more money from you. But I don't. <laughs> I, I don't think sitting tight, though, with the Trump tariff world, is the way to go. You say? Well, that varies. I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not an investor. I'm a. I, I trade what's in front of me over a weekly or daily or hourly period. I mean, it's. It, it's, it's hard to say. Certainly tariffs are are going to cause a significant amount of uncertainty with anything involving like the futures prices or speculation, but it, it's hard to say how what, what kind of long-term effect is any of this going to have, and, and probably little if, if they all go away and everything's back to OBKB. Okay, so uh, the Trump tariffs with China, how does this shake out? Let's get your crystal balls on the table here. Well, I'll tell you one. China uh, did a pretty good move by going after our agricultural stuff because not only does that hit the farmers here, but that hits Trump's base. I think that was more of a shot aimed at, at Trump as a person as opposed to the U.S. in general. And China is – they require a lot of soybean, a lot of other imported ag products because – they raise a lot of hogs, but they cannot produce enough to feed their hogs. They are extremely reliant on foreign meal to feed. And uh, it, it's, we can outlast them longer than they could outlast us. So you think that America can win this trade war? Oh, yeah, certainly. I mean, that's, that's not really a – China – is is really important, but it's not like the U.S. couldn't and China couldn't each suffer some short to midterm economic pain while the U.S. shifts uh, their their positive trade policies to countries around China that don't like China, like like uh, Vietnam and uh, India. There's a, those two countries would uh, who who knows? It's, <laughs> it's a lot of speculation. How do you feel about things? Are you drinking more, John? No, I'm pretty positive, actually. I, I like all this stuff. It's it's good this is all happening in the summer. This is good this is all happening Pourquoi? now and not... Pourquoi? You know, Pourquoi? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, summers are usually... This is where it's kind of one of the unsung benefits or things you like or hate about be, being a trader is that summers are usually... Uh, slower. There's not a lot of market activity because it's nice out. People like to go on vacations. People like to relax. There's just summer's generally kind of a a lull. And if you're a trader and you love to trade, that sucks. If you are like a professional who works for somebody for a firm, you probably like it. Um, but as far as you know, people being concerned about stuff when they're working at their jobs over in the fall and the winter and the spring, this. It, Sentiment-wise, I think this is a pretty good time for this to all be happening. Okay, so uh, what are the farmers saying in South Dakota where uh, we have reached you today, John Morgan with Forex Lens? What, what are the farmers saying about how the Trump tariffs have taken them? Well, I, as I said, just talking with a, a buddy who's a, who's a farmer. We were at a, it was at a wedding a couple weekends ago, and... Um, you know, we he had we hadn't talked for a little bit, but he didn't say much other than he was really mad. <laughs> he was really mad. He he said, you know, I understand why this is happening, but uh, I don't understand how we're supposed to feel patriotic when you know we can't uh, get, get, make a gain on our on our contracts. So how, how sustainable is this long term? I know there's a twelve billion dollar uh, bailout in the books. Uh, Trump wants to. Uh, put towards uh, compensating farmers for their losses. Uh, many say that that's a Band-Aid on a broken leg, you say? It is. Uh, and, and that's actually, I, I get the idea of why you would do it. I mean, it, farmers are, are, are kind of hit because of some other things, and it's like, okay, I get why they would want to, you know, give them some money for the problems, but... There was just a guy on a, on a, one of the other market market uh, uh, stations today. He was saying that farmers don't want that. They don't. 
it's like they're making a buck from the government and getting a paycheck. That's not what they want. They want to be able to operate in a free open market. And these prices, they're going to get shocked with anything like this. When you talk, just talk about tariffs, you talk about uh, uh, affecting some industries that haven't had to ha suffer this kind of news stuff in a long time, you're going to get these massive fluctuations in prices. And it's freaky, sure. But you got to let things ride out, and, and things eventually find an equilibrium. You know, things oftentimes travel back to where they were. There's a lot of people freak out in the short term, that's, but that's normal. Well, I lost a lot of money. I put a, a ton of dough into an electric car dealership in the Middle East, sea monkeys and novelty pajamas that glow in the dark. So what do I know? <laughs> Not good investments. John Morgan. Well, is America's number one day trader. He's with Forex Lens. Tell us about Forex Lens quickly before we go. I want to do a plug for you. Sure. ForexLens.com is an uh, educational site first. Uh, we, we strive to provide quality, good education for an understanding how to trade and look at technical analysis because a lot of the stuff out there is crap. And I want to make sure that people are getting good quality information based on, on, on the current industry standards. Hey, don't underestimate the value of glow-in-the-dark pajamas as an investment either. Or those sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Because when they die, they make a great protein drink. Anyway, they thank th th Thank you, John Morgan. Uh, you can tweet me at Andrew Crystal with a K. This is Crystal Nation. See you folks next week.